I start, Carmen? Uh, let's wait for the people to join because okay. uh, uh, now we, we, are, we just made the, the morning mark uh, public. Okay. So we I are do. waiting for, for the people to join. And once we have uh, uh, a reasonable number of attendees, we can, we can start. And you'll do a, an introduction or? Yes. Okay. Oh, hello to the people that are joining. Welcome to our webinar. Um, we are waiting a couple of minutes for other people to join and we'll start briefly. Thank you. Okay, so maybe we can start. Um, uh, hello to everybody. Um, thank you for joining today uh, in the first uh, um, webinar of, of the series that we are restarting uh, now for presenting uh, skills uh, for development, for research and development um, uh, conducted by uh, PEP research fellows. Um, today, Veronica Amarante will present on the representation of developing country researchers in development research, uh, precisely. Um, Veronica is, uh, is a professor at uh, the Instituto de Economía um, uh, in the Universidad de la República in Uruguay, and she has uh, worked uh, extensively in development economics um, as in other areas, and she has special interest in Latin American economies. So we welcome her. Thank you, Veronica, for presenting today. Um, she will present uh, first, and then we have um, time for questions. So you can you can write your questions in the in the chat box, either in the chat box or in the Q and A um, uh, section. So. So, um, Veronica, thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Carmen. Uh, well, hello to everybody. Uh, thank you for the opportunity of, of sharing this research. Um, we uh, this this what the paper that I'm presenting uh, was done by a, a group of researchers. There you have our names from different countries, and 
Uh, I'm basically uh, trying to, to give you the, the general idea of what we are uh, of, of what we are uh, studying at PEP now. This is part of a broader project trying to, to analyze uh, the, the representation of the Global South in, in the development area in research. So our motivation, first of all, we think that uh, academic conferences and, and publication in peer reviewed journals are crucial areas for Southern academic community because they, they contribute both to the dissemination of our research and to the strengthening of the quality. Uh, networkers, uh, networking at conference is also very relevant for the academic like, life. It influences the global development research agenda. It is uh, a place where you, you get connected to other researchers. There are uh, mentoring opportunities for, for young researchers. And in terms of publications, academic publications, and this, by this we are meaning a publication in, in peer review journals, can also help to improve the quality of the research and, and to bring development problems of specific geographical areas to, to light. So uh, what we argue is that a more prominent presence of Southern-based research in, in the international uh, scientific community and this includes, as I said, publications and conferences, uh, implies benefits in terms of higher connections between social and economic situations, institutional conditions, and policy recommendations, as a thousand researchers are the ones uh, that get a, 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 have a, a, a more in-depth knowledge of the context of the, of the developing countries or of the context where the research, research is, uh, is taking place. Uh, the, uh, it may also imply uh, a strength, it, it may also help to strengthen the national research systems in, in southern countries. It helps to set priorities and it may guide investment in specific policies, depending on the impact of, of, the, of the research. And it uh, would imply also more diversity in the academic community. So, what we do in this paper is we uh, we try to provide evidence about the situation in terms of the representation of Southern researchers in, in publications and in conferences. So we have a, we specifically address three areas: conference presentations, uh, publications, and we do like two uh, two. Uh, two approaches. We first look at the submission process in some specific uh, journals, and we also look uh, uh, at, at 20 uh, top development journals, uh, the articles and the, and the citations. Before going on, I should uh, make an important declaration is what, what we are referring when we say thousand researchers. Uh, we, are, uh, we, we are referring to researchers located in a, in a in a thousand country. This means that uh, the main uh, institution uh, is in a, in a, in a thousand country. This does, is obviously not, not completely linked to the place where researchers are born, not at all. So you may have uh, researchers from developing, uh, who were born in developing countries, but are working in developed ones and they, they there will not uh, be included in the group of, of Southern researchers. We are mainly trying to reflect the, the academic environment where researchers are, are working. So, uh, as I said, our first uh, step is to look at conferences and uh, uh, the paper presents an analysis of, of the participation of Southern researchers at seven development conferences which uh, took place in the last decade, basically. There you have the, the names of the conference. The, they are all uh, very well-known conferences in the, in the areas of development. Uh, one uh, aspect, uh, one interesting aspect is that only one of, the, of those conferences, the African Economic Conferences, is hosted in a, in a, devel in a developing country. All, all the others were hosted in developed countries. And here you have uh, the the result of the analysis. Basically, you have in the in the green lines the representation of researchers 
which are based in universities in, in the north and it's a, it's quite stable in the period and it's around a, a 57 or 50 to 59 percent of, of presentations are done by by researchers based in the north and the representation of researchers who work in universities in the south is around nine percent and what is missing there is a, a papers presented presented by by researchers uh, not working in universities for example international organizations or, or other institutions so this gives uh, a first a, a first broad idea of, of the results we have a, a clearly an under representation of of um, southern researchers in in conferences uh, also, what is uh, interesting in this analysis is that uh, in the African conference, which is the one, as I said, that is that takes place uh, in in a um, in a developing country, there the representation is is uh, the the picture is quite different because there is almost half represent, uh, representation of of thousand researchers. So this also gives like a kind of an idea about what about the, the role of, for example, uh, traveling costs and, and other barriers that Southern researchers may, may have to face to attend these conferences. Our, our second uh, approach is the analysis of the publication pipeline for, for development journals. Uh, these development journals, there you have the list, the Economic Development and Cultural Change, the Journal of Human Development and Capabilities, the Review of Development Economics, and the Journal of African Economics. Economics, sorry. Uh, this, uh, we, what we did in this part of the research, we asked uh, uh, a, a list of, of development journals. Uh, we asked them for information about submissions, rejections, test rejections, and um, number of papers reviewed, and then a uh, number of papers accepted. And we got uh, information from these from these uh, four journals. As you see, they are um, they are quite different journals. We have the, the two the first two ones are included in, in the list of the. If you get a, a ranking from a ranking of development journals, those two journals are included in the in the in the in the top twenty journals in development. Then we have the review of development economics, which is a, a, a medium uh, journal uh, classified. And we have a, a, a regional journal as a journal of African economies. And in this case, in the analysis, the, the, what we do is that the submissions are, are broken down by the institutional affiliation of the lead author. So each, uh, each paper, each article, or each paper is classified as a, a south, southern or northern, depending on the on the location of the lead author. And this uh, this picture gives the 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 idea of our our result. Uh, what we have if uh, we have the total number of submissions, and if you look at the third column in this table. Uh, we can see that the, the distribution of submissions by by region is in the in the in the first two journals, which which are as I said like a, a ranked as as high quality journals. We have a higher participation of submissions from north uh, from researchers located in the north, and then in the in the other two ones in the review of development economics and in the journal of African economics economics we have around sixty percent of submissions that are uh, uh, done by south uh, by researchers from the south. Then we have the death rejections, and if you go to the column with the percentage of, of these rejections, we can see there uh, that uh, clearly the, it, the rates are higher for Southern researchers. We have in the economic development and cultural change, 79% of, of submissions are uh, death rejected for Southern researchers. And uh, the figure is uh, around 69% for the, the Journal of Human Development and Capabilities. And, 63% from the review of development economics. Unfortunately, we do not have that information from 
from the journal of African economies, we have like more aggregate information from this for this journal. And what happens as so this is the first uh, the first uh, result. So we a higher a considerable higher rate of death rejections for for papers from southern researchers. Then once papers get reviewed, so we have uh, they are the percentage of accepted of accept, accepted papers. And for example, in the economic development and cultural change, we really do not get a uh, high differences. So around 25% or 23% of articles are accepted, of, of review articles are accepted. Uh, and in the other two uh, journals, we get a higher difference. We, we, we get a, an acceptance rate of 30% for Northern researchers in and 23% and for Southern in the Journal of Human Development Capabilities, and even a higher uh, difference in the review of development economics. So the final, the last column in this table gives you the, like the final, the final result of this process. And it's basically that the rates of, ascent, of acceptance uh, of, of articles over total submissions are, uh, there is a big gap between uh, articles that are uh, sent by, by researchers located in the north or in the south. Acceptance rates are, uh, uh, are low in general terms for all, for all the journals, so a lot of papers uh, are submitted and get rejected, but uh, the difference and the gap between those papers uh, from uh, researchers located in the north or in the south, it's, it's a big. So then this, this was, as I said, the, the second approach of the paper. The third one is to look at uh, publications considering articles uh, and, and citations. And what we do in this part of the paper is to analyze the presence of thousand researchers in, in, in some development economic journals and, the, and the, also the relevance of the articles that dealt with thousand regions. So this uh, this is uh, basically, this part is basically a bibliographical study of publications in selected developing journals, and the data uh, is taken from Scopus Elsevier uh, and from 1990 to 2019. So it's like, uh, it's a time and we are considering um, articles in, in development journals. The journals here, we have the list of, of journals in the, in the original a, a paper we we consider two lists. Uh, the, uh, one list is taken from the Google Scholar Ranking for Development Journals, and the other one is an alternative alternative list which comes from a combination of, of different rankings of development journals. I'm presenting uh, here only the the results based on the original list of journals, but they are basically the same results. They're very very consistent. As you see, um, the, the, there you have the list of, of, of journals uh, rank according to the, this ranking, and not all the not not all the paper not all the journals are in both lists. We have uh, in gray you have the ones that are uh, uh, that there is an overlap and they they are included in both lists. But the, the basic idea is that we have a very well known. Uh, development journals. Uh, we have uh, some uh, regional journals, for example, in, in the original list, we have the African Development uh, Review and Development Southern Africa. So th these are, are regional journals. And I, I, I emphasize this because as in the case of conferences, which, which are taken in, in, uh, in the, as we saw, uh, that's conferences which were taken in, in developing countries, the, the presence of Southern researcher was higher. Also in terms of, of, of journals, and this is something that we would expect, but in regional journals, we have a, like more presence for, for Southern researchers. In the, in the we, we, we were able to, to test this because in the alternative list, uh, we also have another regional we have a other regional service and, and it's a, it's consistent. Once we, we include regional uh, journals, there is some change in the composition of the of the authorship of, of, of articles, of published articles. So before entering uh, uh, to, to the results that are presented in this paper, I, I just wanted to to get your attention into the the 
the editorial boards of this of these uh, journals. Uh, we, we in this paper we do not analyze the the potential links uh, between publication and the the location of, of of the editorial boards. But I'm just wanted to to show uh, the presence of thousand researchers in in among editors in all these journals and it's in in on a, in average it's 90 19 percent of, of of the editors are from southern are located in southern universities or in southern institutions and 80 percent 81 percent are located in northern institutions so there is a a very a disbalanced a composition of the editorial boards uh, again, if we look at the at the regional, uh, in this case, the African Development, uh, the African Development Review, for example, which is a, a regional journal, there we have a completely different uh, situation. As there, uh, eighty three percent of the of the editors are located in 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 Afri in in, the, in southern countries. So what we do is uh, in this case. And this is a kind of a, of a different uh, criteria from the one that I ex uh, explained before. As you remember, in the case of, of the four specific journals, we were classifying the articles depending on the on the location of the lead author, and so each article uh, could be southern or northern. But here we take into account uh, all the authors of the of the article, and so we consider two criteria, the authorship and the topic of the article. With respect to the authorship, uh, uh, we consider the geographical location of the first institutional affiliation by each author. So uh, each author can be classified as southern-based, northern-based, or we can also have, a, sorry, each article or we can also have articles which are written uh, by some uh, researchers located in the southern and some research in the south sorry and some researchers located in the north so we are calling them uh, collaborations between northern and southern researchers as i said in this southern researchers are maybe based in african asian or latin american countries and what we also do here is considering the title and the keywords of, of each article we uh, we try to to distinguish those those who are who are which are uh, based which are sorry a focus on a specific country or a specific uh, region uh, so we can divide them as a uh, articles that refer to South or countries or regions or more general articles that are obviously a uh, development articles but maybe like more with a more, more broad approach and as i said we have this uh, uh, estimate what we are what i am presenting here we have it estimated also with the alternative list of journals and the results are basically the same but uh, i'm just presented the, the Google rank, the top 20 development channels according to the Google ranking. So we are considering, uh, there you have in red, uh, the total number of articles that are considered. It's around almost uh, 25,000 articles. And if you, if we consider the, the authorship of the article, 73% of these articles are written by uh, researchers located in northern, in northern institutions. 16% are written by researchers uh, who are located in southern institutions. And then we have uh, an 11% of collaborations between uh, researchers based in, at different places. This is like the, for the whole period, I will then show how, how it evolves in time. And the other, uh, the other aspect that I would like to, to, uh, to highlight is that around 61% of those articles are uh, specific for a specific region or a specific country. Uh, so they are development articles focused on a, on a certain on a certain context and we have also like uh, the other articles more general are, are around 39 percent of the total so what uh, as i said i what we were looking before was like the whole period here we have like the evolution in in time in terms of the number of articles and 
uh, in terms of the distribution of articles uh, according to the location of the authors. What we see there is, as I said, the importance of, of uh, articles written by Northern, Northern uh, researchers. It has been increasing in time, clearly increasing in time. Uh, but we also have an increase in the in the collaborations, which is not so clear when you look at the absolute number of articles. But if we look at the distribution by region, in the in the right hand side of the of the screen, there you have like the distribution, and you can see that the importance of, of, of articles written in collaboration by South and North researchers has been increasing in time. And, and this is an, an interesting finding. Uh, so this may be related uh, as to you know, uh, lower, lower costs of collaboration in terms of the technological facilities to, to, to interact with researchers from, from remote places, etc. But it's it's a it's quite clear the tendency to increase in this collaboration. And when we look, uh, we, we take a closer look at these collaborations. What we see here is a distribution of the collaborations in the graph according to the to the location of the southern researchers who are participating. And we have that basically the collaborations take place between ASEAN researchers and the most part of the collaboration is between ASEAN researchers and Northern researchers. And then uh, also it is important the collaboration between African researchers and Northern researchers. Uh, when we uh, look at the location of the, of the researchers from the, from the North who are uh, writing with thousand researchers. This is a very, it's clearly very concentrated. You have like more than 64% are in, in two countries, United States or United Kingdom. So all the research collaborations are, are basically there. Then we, you have a, an important number also of collaborations uh, in Netherlands, and then it's like decreasing in, in the other European countries. And this, uh, this pattern of, of collaborations here, we, we try to illustrate it with, with a software tool that, that allows to, to see these collaborations uh, in, the, in, the, in the circles. You have a, the, the size of the circle depends on the, on the number of articles. And the color tries to identify like each network. For example, what we see there is that uh, the importance of, as, I, as we as we saw in the in the previous table, the importance of the United States and the United Kingdom in terms of collaborations with uh, researchers located in the south, in in researchers in development, uh, and then we see that in the case of the United States, the red lines that like, the collaborations take take. Uh, take place with, with Latin American countries. You have Argentina, Ecuador, Chile, a lot of Latin American uh, researchers uh, collaborated with the United States, also with some European researchers. And in the case of the United Kingdom, the, the networks are, are uh, strong with uh, some African countries. And also uh, you have there Vietnam also. And uh, other African countries which are not in the green uh, network are in the blue one. If you look at the, in the upper part of the of the of the of the figure, and it's this is like uh, African researchers collaborating uh, with France, with France or Canada. So it's obviously, or it seems like there's something obviously related to language here in this in this network. And then we have like the. Uh, the violet uh, networks that that connect India with with Asian countries in in the to the to the to the right of the of the of the screen. So this is like about this. I uh, was about the number of 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 articles or, or publications. What about the the impact that those publications uh, may have. What we did here is uh, analyze the citations per article according to the to the researcher's origin. Again, we are working with, with our uh, classification of South and Northern and, and the collaborations. Uh, 
first of all, this, this graph shows the average citation per article for each one of those uh, 20, 25,000 articles. And we see the, the, the inverted, this inverted U form, which basically indicates that uh, those papers that were published more recently tend to get a, a, a smaller number of citations, but the, this will be changing in, in time. And it's clear that uh, uh, articles written by, by South researchers get a considerable, considerably less number of, of citations. But then what we have is like a mixed picture with, uh, between Northern and North, uh, articles written only by Northern researchers and articles written by Northern and Southern researchers. As you see, it's, it's almost, uh, it seems that after 2005, even uh, those articles written in collaboration by Southern and Northern researchers tend to, to get um, more, more citations. So what we did to try to, to, to disentangle this situation is uh, we, we run some very basic research, uh, regressions. This is not included in the, in, the, in the joint paper that we wrote and I basically presented. This is from other paper, but uh, I thought it was interesting to show uh, that when we, you consider the, the citations per article and you run like let's concentrate on the first two two columns of this of this chart and you like consider the, the determinants of the factors uh, that are uh, related to the citations that each article each article uh, gets what we we try to look at the at the origin of the of the researchers at the omitted uh, category here is articles written by thousand researchers before two, 2005 because as we we were looking at, the, at that uh, graph that I showed before, and we said, "Well, here is like a like a, a change," and we wanted to reflect it. And what we, we get here is basically, if you look at the coefficient in the basic baseline model, this coefficient like indicates that, uh, for example, collaborations. Uh, between Southern and North researchers get more citations, and uh, this even increases after two, 2005. But uh, after we, we you, when you get this more rigorous uh, uh, consideration of citations, Northern researchers, articles written by Northern researchers are clearly uh, getting more citations than the, the other than the other ones. What we do then is like uh, in the other column, we include some some uh, uh, more uh, controls. We control for the topic, if it's for the topic of the article, and basically the results are not changed. So uh, the, the, the number of, of citations per article, it's like quite clearly differ differentiated between those articles that are written by Northern researchers and the rest. So what some some final uh, comments for the discussion. Uh, uh, what we what we are uh, doing here is like providing evidence that uh, the discussion for about development, uh, economic development, is mainly among researchers located in the north, and both at conferences and and journals, the bulk of research is conducted and discussed by researchers from from northern institutions. So, located in northern institution this may have a very different uh, potential causes it may be uh, uh, due to deficiencies in research skills english uh, language proficiency the the strengths of scientific networks access to research funding travel grants there is a a very nice uh, paper from anna kasuf which like uh, analyzes each one of these of these uh, potential causes, so we are aware that we are in, we are not. I mean, like discussing each of these potential causes in 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 depth, but uh, there are many multi, multi fact, multiple factors that may be affecting, and this. But this our results may also, or at least in part, be uh, the result of, of a certain culture of exclusivity in the economic profession. Some. We argue that some practices and some paradigms uh, may be uh, 
probably unintentionally, but may be uh, resulting in this uh, exclusion from thousand researchers and, in, and, and may also result in, in, in lower plurality and, and diversity. So uh, what, what we what we think is that we, we need to, to discuss, uh, we need ideas to discuss uh, how to create a more inclusive environment for researchers which are working on development in the South. Uh, probably the role of proficiency in English uh, is something that uh, it's probably very important and we, we get some clues about that when we look uh, when we we looked at that chart with the with the with the collaborations and and the colors of the of the of the kind of collaborations that were between uh, researchers in in English or, or French uh, speaking countries. Uh, the, we also get like this this um, optimist idea that the the collaborations between South and, and South, uh, researchers located in the South and in the North may be an avenue for change. As, as we saw, these collaborations have been increasing in terms of, of publications. So there is something to to explore the incentives of cooperation. How how this cooperation can be. Uh, can, can be incentivized with uh, may, this may be a, a sound strategy to to overcome these difficulties and then some some a basic uh, a basic announcement mm -hmm. at PEP we are thinking about uh, some action points and very concrete action points that uh, involve diverse areas and um, diverse actors, including development channels, research networks, development conference, research founders, and of course, uh, uh, researchers, uh, our our own attitudes that make like trying to, to, to put all these things more clearly in the discussion may help to, to, to improve these aspects. So this is basically what I wanted to share. Uh, I don't know, Carmen, how we do with the with a Thank you. Questions. Thank you, Veronica. Yes, we have uh, so far. I think we have one question. Uh, uh, somebody asked uh, is asking if the publishers that you presented. I think they were the first ones. Are Scopus indexes and and if it's open access. Uh, uh, this this article. Um, so I, I think the they were referring. Yeah, I don't understand the question entirely, but I think it's referring to um to the publishers to the journals that you were yeah that you were analyzing ah no not all not uh, not all the journals are i mean uh, we got uh, for the for the study uh, about the the 20 uh, the 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 20 journals the top 20 journals in development the data we got it from a from a from a from a from a date uh, from a database that is called timbo that was accessible for researchers from for Uruguay, where you can get download all the articles uh, for free. You could if you were a researcher uh, located in, in Uruguay. So it's a specific. It was a specific uh, database that we have access to. Uh, you can you can also work uh, with. I mean, if someone is interested in, in doing like this kind of analysis, there is a, a, a database which is called uh, Dimensions, which also has this kind of information and allows to do this kind of bi bibliographical studies. Okay, then uh, we have some comments. Um, Simeon um, says that funding may also be a problem, leading to underrepresentation. Uh, and Rusi says that uh, it's uh, uh, very interesting, and, and especially the points two and three in the in the final remarks, uh, the first one that you that you presented. Um, so, any more questions? I see here uh, Carmen a question mm -hmm. in the Q and A. It says, "Does oh, the yes. does the regression analysis include some sort of quality control, something like?" Quartile fixed effect. We include a, a fixed effect for the for the journals. So it's like a, it's as the journals are. are a, I mean, it, it are a, it, the, the fixed effects are for, are for the journals. We also have control for the number of of uh, authors, but uh, we we do not. 
uh, include the, for example, the the SGRA or other rankings. No, we just uh, have general fixed effects. Okay. Yeah. The the question the comment from Jorge says it would be interesting to run your regression analysis with a citation indicator weighed by an indicator of, of quality citations per percentile of journal. Okay. Yes. As I I think this is an interesting question. As we were like working with with all uh, the journals in development. I mean, in a in a, in the same uh, discipline, in the same area, uh, we were thinking that this may, I mean, that the inclusion of fixed effects may have some, may, may be enough, but we, we can look at this. Thank you, Jorge. We have two more comments or questions. Uh, it says there is a missing link between senior researchers and junior researchers. Calls for research proposals are given in a very short time, hence deadlines are not met. That's a comment by Simeon. And then um, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, as well, funding being a, a problem. Okay. And uh, now I have a question by Christian. Do you know something about the nationalities of the people who are writing about the Southern, but who are based in the North? Uh, no, unfortunately, we cannot, uh, we cannot uh, disentangle, we, we don't know the, the nationality of the researchers because this would be very interesting. Like it also for trying to, to build the, the research networks, no? because probably there are a lot of people who, who are, uh, there are some researchers who are based in the north and try to keep, uh, you know, to, to keep net research networks with thousand researchers. And I mean, we, I, I am, we did this, uh, a study for a specific area, which is economics in Uruguay, very, very specific and with a much small number of publications. But there you see clearly that there is a, a strategy at least in this group of researchers of uh, trying to keep links with northern researchers uh, which which are Uruguayan economists but working in the in northern countries and and this has a, a an impact in in publications a clear impact in the in the in the possibilities of in the probabilities of getting published and also in the in the quality or, or the impact of the journal where you get published so yes, I mean, we, we cannot, uh, the, the question, the answer to the question is that uh, we don't know the nationality, but but we suspect that this has a, a, a lot to do with this kind of, uh, with these research networks. I think we don't have any more questions. It's important to highlight again that uh, PEP uh, it's, uh, tries to overcome many of these uh, constraints for uh, publishing and participating in conferences uh, from uh, researchers from the South and it also uh, the funding problem that was uh, highlighted. But yeah, of course, it's still, uh, as results show, still a problem. So as a comment uh, here, that uh, it would be good to emphasize future collaborations between South and North networks. Something to yes. work. Yes, in, in terms of like of policy orientations for, for, for research policies, I think that that is an important point. I think this is a very important dialogue uh, for us researchers located in the South. So um, thank you very much, Veronica, for your presentation. And as I, as I mentioned in the chat box, this paper is published and, and, and John has um, pointed out it's open access. So um, 
the link. Uh, I, I shared the link to the to the article. Um, so, okay. So we have one last question. What's your view on the importance of access to top journals, but researchers in the south? Uh, I'm not sure if the, if the question refers to to get, uh, to the access. Or, I mean, to to be, being able to read and uh, the articles published there, or the true importance of publication on those journals, which is a completely different question. Because mm -hmm. here I didn't say that, but uh, we are like uh, we are like uh, basically considering that this this publication um, publication in these peer review journals uh, helps to to build uh, quality research. There is also an open discussion about uh, to to which extent, and probably most of you know it about which to which extent we should like focus so much on on this publishing. Um, a road or try to think about different things. So I think uh, if, if, they are, if, the, if the question refers to the access uh, uh, to the access in terms of reading, it's uh, obviously almost impossible trying to, to develop a, a, an academic career or, or to, to do research if you do not have access to that journals and, and you are not able to read in that. There are this nowadays, we have uh, like uh, ways to accessing this, you know, this uh, like illegals, I would say ways to access in the, the articles, which are very widespread, but uh, there is a, a, a problem there. The open access, the, the costs of the open access publication for, for Southern researchers are, are, and for Southern institutions are, uh, are almost impossible. I mean, it, it's not, uh, it's, quite difficult and I'll, at least what I know from, from Latin American countries are still like far from thinking about uh, something general or, or institutions uh, paying for open access publication from, from the researchers. Access, I think access, it, it's a, uh, uh, okay, she, she, there is a declaration that it was access to reading articles and I, I think it's it's basic, it's a basic input for trying to develop an, an academic, uh, an academic uh, uh, career, I mean, it's it's basic and you, as I said, it, it's uh, it's different in, in different countries, but it, it, it may be a, an obstacle, yes. This research network, an important thing is that this kind of research networks can also work like with some uh, uh, with some with some kind of uh, solidarity in terms of uh, uh, be, uh, bringing the southern researchers the possibility of access to to these articles we have all all of us probably most of us use some uh, some uh, researcher in the north and ask can you uh, give me, can you provide me this article because I cannot, uh, I do not have access and I need to, to look at this. So this kind of, those kind of things also work. There is a, a question in the, in the Q&A that says, at some point, do you make the argument that there might be a bias against Southern researchers? Um, we, what, what we think is that, uh, I, I mean, there, in terms, for example, uh, of uh, when we look at the at the submission process, and uh, we have uh, data, for example, for for one specific uh, journal, we have uh, the reasons for the death rejections, and a lot of death rejections were because the paper is not well written. I mean, I think there may be some kind of unconscious bias in terms of uh, when you read a paper. The language uh, is is a re very relevant, uh, very relevant aspect, and there you can you can look at the paper and you 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 know if it was written by a, by someone who is a native speaker or by someone who is making a great effort to to write in English. And so even in this kind in these processes of of blind peer review, you can get kind of information about those things, and and maybe it, it, it may also be operating. Thank you. 
Thank you, everybody, for your questions and comments. Um, thank you, Veronica, for your presentation. And we invite you to join our next webinar that will take place in two weeks on, uh, on Thursday, I think it's October 14th, uh, on, on data publishing. So I think it, it might be of, of great interest also to, to all researchers. So we hope to, to see you uh, in, in that seminar. Okay, thank you. Bye, thank you everybody. Bye.